Joining me now is Chief Creative Officer at Turning Point USA, Benny Johnson. Benny, this is like China level censorship. Uh, we already kind of knew this was going on. I think we both have been uh, either shadow banned, censored by Twitter. Our friends have been, and it seems to happen one way, one direction towards conservatives, uh, not the other way around. Yes, indeed, Steph, the left cannot meme. And when they don't like the memes that we produce or the news that we produce or literally any news, they just ban it, right? This is the absolute act of tyrannical government. This is an act of tyranny. Welcome to a world under socialism. AOC's world, the Chinese communists live like this every single day on social media where there are thought crimes, where there is social credit scores. And if you commit thought crimes, then you are banned. And when you're banned from social media, it's like you are a second class digital citizen in the world. You don't have the same access and the same, you could call it digital rights that a lot of people have to communicate and see and interact online because we are living in a digital world. And therefore it becomes very, very essential that the rules and the rights that we have as Americans dating back to our founding, like the freedom of press, the freedom freedom of speech, the freedom of religion, the freedom to explain and know and be heard by our government, that those things are protected in our digital age. And this week has been a just bold-faced affront to these rights. Yeah, some people are calling it a war with big tech, if you will. And I don't recall seeing something at this level where they just totally blocked a URL and then they started uh, censoring and suspending the accounts who even shared the article. We saw White House Press Secretary Kayleigh McEnany, she was suspended. I mean, don't the American people have the right to hear what the White House Press Secretary has to say? Don't people have the right to hear what their government has to say? This is a terrifying thing. This is a wag the dog thing. So who has the power? When, the, when Twitter is able to limit a government account, the government account of the House Judiciary Committee, posted the article on their verified Twitter handle and on a government URL, Twitter blocked it. So now you have big tech going in and saying what the government can and cannot say and blocking and banning our own government from giving the people who elect them information. This is a terrifying precedent. People don't quite fully understand exactly how scary this is. And I'll put it into terms that hopefully your viewers can understand because it becomes very, it's very big for people like you and I, Stephanie, who are on social media all day, but some people aren't. So imagine you're on a phone call and you're on a phone call with your mom and your mom says that she doesn't like that Joe Biden sniffs kids. And that's okay. Obviously both of our mothers, you know, are, we have beautiful hair. So our moms would be concerned about Joe Biden sniffing us. If the, my, if someone on the phone company is listening to our conversation and says, I don't like that she said that, and cuts off our phone line, and then cuts off our ability to use the telephone, and says that your mother is offensive, so we're not gonna allow her to use the phone anymore. That is exactly what big tech did here. There is no difference. The phone lines are treated as a platform, tech is treated as a platform. So what happened was, someone was listening in on your conversation, and then they cut your phone lines because they didn't like what you were saying. That is precisely what happened here. It is terrifying precedent. I love the uh, Joe Biden hair sniffing example. That's great. Um, now, uh, the. Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey actually admitted that blocking the URLs is wrong, but it's like too little too late. Also, he didn't really do much to fix it. And, and he's just concerned because Republicans are very serious about this now. They say they are. I mean, they've, they've been talking about it for a while. There's, of course, those Republicans that are like, just let the free market decide. But it's like not really doesn't work that way. Um, it, they're just too big. And they have such an influence over our country, especially when it comes to elections. Uh, I said at the beginning of, of this, if this is an election interference, I don't know what, the, what this is. This is like an in-kind donation to Democrats. They're trying to censor a bad story about Biden, a story that they don't like from the New York Post. Where, where are all those people who get upset about freedom of the press? They're all pretty quiet right now. That's correct, and also about in-kind contributions. You would also hear about you know, money in politics. This is something the left also bangs the drum on. Well, what you've seen this week is the largest in-kind contribution in political history to a singular party, to a candidate, via a massive corporation. And that in-kind contribution is in the millions, billions. I would argue that it's priceless. How, what is the cost of, in an election season, limiting bad information about your preferred candidate? There is absolutely no price that you can put on that. The limiting and canceling and making illegal of information is actually the 
biggest in-kind contribution you could possibly have to a political campaign. And it shows the egregious and unbridled power of big tech and why we must do two things. One, repeal 230. Uh, which says that tech is a platform and not a publisher. You and I have both worked at publishers. We understand how publishers uh, work by, by selecting what we want on our sites, right? We were both at the Daily Caller together. We selected what we wanted to write and what we wanted to put. That's what a publisher does, right? We care for our audience by giving them what we think they want. The big tech companies operate like platforms. And so the platform says that anyone has uh, the ability to post anything they want and that it, we are simply servicing uh, people anything that they, the news that is put on our platform, this is obviously not how they're operating. They're operating as publishers. That immunity needs to be stripped immediately. And then I would argue that big tech is a monopoly and it needs to be broken up. A monopoly under antitrust law is seen as 50 plus 1% of a market. How much of the Google search market does Google own? I mean, you call it the Google search market. That's what a mono that's how big of a monopoly it is. Same with Facebook, same with Instagram that Facebook owns, and Twitter. If they can control and censor information with such effectiveness, they are indeed a monopoly and they need to be broken up. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, Twitter says, oh, well, this violated our hacking policy. Okay, um, but anytime that there's something on President Trump, whether it's true or verified or this and that, they don't care. They, 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 they let any of those articles go up, whether it's his taxes or the Russian collusion hoax. So this argument that it, it goes against their hacking policies is just such a scam. Well, Benny, I'm going to have to run. Thank you. Thanks, Seth.